Amen. This parable is very interesting, right? It has two men. One is a Pharisee and one is a tax collector. And Jesus tells this parable after the parable of the widow, right? The persistent widow and the unjust judge. So this is all about praying. Or is it all about praying? It's about praying in such that he tells this parable about these two men. And the thing is, we hear this parable and we already know the, the ending of it, right? Because the beginning of it is, is Jesus told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. And when I read that, you knew right away who was the one who was thinking of themselves as being righteous and held others with contempt. The Pharisee or the tax collector? The Pharisee. In Jesus' day... When Jesus told this parable, they would have heard that to be the tax collector. Because tax collectors were agents of whom? Caesar, right. And were they Roman or were they Jewish? Both. So this tax collector who is in the temple is probably a... Jew, not a Roman. If he was a Roman, why would he be in the temple? He wouldn't be. Right? If he's Roman, he doesn't believe in God, so he wouldn't be in the temple praying. This tax collector is a Jew and is an agent of Rome and is robbing the people because in order for him to make a living, he has to take his money from the people that he collects taxes from. So when Jesus said that somebody is self-righteous and holds other with contempt, he's not meaning the one who upholds the law and does everything that God tells us to do. He means the lowly tax collector. Right? We don't hear it that way. Because we know that Jesus is talking about the Pharisee. So the whole object of this lesson that Jesus is telling us this morning is... Dear God, thank you that I'm not like this Pharisee, right? Right? This means yes. This means no. This means you're probably going to tell us something different than what I say anyhow. Right? I mean, that would be the object lesson here. If we're not supposed to hold others with contempt and we're supposed to look upon God and know what it is that we've done, right? Right? then we shouldn't want to be like the Pharisee. But it's not that simple. It's not that simple. See, because both of these men got what they got in spite of who they are, not because of who they are. I just have to say this morning, if, those, if anyone here thinks that I planned that song that my daughter sang. I had absolutely nothing to do with it. But it was a perfect fit for these readings and for what I'm going to say this morning. You see, there's a lot to this parable about a man who comes out and prays, I'm glad I'm not like this person over here. Because I give a tenth of my income. I study the scriptures. I do everything that's right. Right? Because this is not about being self-righteous or self-justified. Well, actually it is. This is about the difference about between being righteous and being justified. Because this Pharisee, in all accounts of everything that we see, was righteous. Which is interesting for me to stand up here and say, being a child of the 80s. Um, right? Because what did righteous... Thank you, somebody got it at least. What did righteous mean in the 80s? Those of you that are my age, come on, you know what it meant, right? He was righteous in the fact that he did everything that he was supposed to do. He upheld the law. He did the, the things that God was supposed to... told everybody that they're supposed to do. He was trying to keep and uphold the laws that God had given him. So in the sense of the technical definition of the word righteous... This Pharisee was righteous towards God. But that righteousness made him self-righteous. Which made him look upon others with contempt. 
Because here's the clincher. Verse 14 has a word in it in the English that we just don't get the full impact thereof. Right? Because it says that the tax collector went away justified. Right? Is that what it says in verse 14? I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. And justified just doesn't quite cut it. There's a lot more to that word in the Greek. I'm not going to try to pronounce Well, sure, I'll try to pronounce it. Dedekaiomenos. Dedekaiomenos is the word in Greek. And it is a perfect passive participle. English majors? You didn't think you were going to come to worship this morning and learn English, did you? It's a perfect passive participle. And this is important to us because it is in the perfect tense, which means what? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, but I don't think Blaze's answer is actually going to be an answer to my question. Not that I don't want to talk to you this morning, Blaze, but... Right? What is the perfect tense? The perfect tense is something that has happened in the past and has continual action into the future. For instance, for God so loved the world is in the perfect tense. It's an action that happened at one particular point in the past and has continuing action into the future. Right? For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. When was that? One perfect point in time. When Jesus stretched out His arms on the cross. It's an action that happened in the past and has continual action into the future. So this is something that He had been justified. And what does the passive anything mean? Who, who does the action in a passive verb or... Somebody else. Right. It's not the man who does it. It's not, he has absolutely no, no say in anything that's happening here. He is completely passive in this inter- interaction. He, he didn't ask for it. He didn't cause it to happen. But yet it happened. So who is it that did this action at some point to this man? Right? So, It's helpful for us to try to change this into a current action sentence rather than a passive sentence. So the passive sentence is the tax collector was has been justified by God. Right. Because he didn't do it. So an active sentence would be God justified the tax collector at some point in the past, having continual action into the future. God did to this man what he could not do for himself. Unlike the Pharisee, who was trying to be righteous, this tax collector just said, I'm a sinner. Help me. And so God justified him. God made him right. God set him in a place that he was in a right relationship with the Creator. Both of these men got what they got in spite of who they were, not because of. Like the lyrics to the song, right? Who am I that the Lord of all the earth would look on me with love? Who am I? Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. Did I get the, not because of what I've, I had it three seconds ago, and now it's just flitted away. Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done, and not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. We're justified because of who God is. It's not about me. It's not about I. It's about God. Because both of these men got what they got, not because of who they were, but because of who God is. 
God calls each and every one of us to look to Him. Not to hold anyone in contempt, not to hold anyone to a standard that is higher than the standard that God is holding them to. But God is asking us to look to Him and to know that we can't make it on our own and to cry out and trust that He is going to justify us because that's the promise that He's given to each and every one of us. So don't look upon another in a way that we shouldn't because the nature of grace is paradoxical. It can be received only by those who have learned empathy for others. In that regard, grace partakes of nature, the nature of mercy and forgiveness. Only the merciful can receive mercy and only those who forgive will be forgiven. The Pharisee had enough religion to be virtuous, but not enough to be humble. As a result, his religion drove him away from the tax collector rather than towards him. Alan Culpepper says in his commentary on the Gospel of Luke, our religion shouldn't get in the way of us doing what Christ has called us to do, which is to see and love our neighbor and not hold them in contempt, but to lift them higher so that God can show them the love that he's given to each and every one of us so that we can all understand that it's God that does the action and not us. So love your neighbors and show them the love that Christ has given to you because only God can make us right. And if we humble ourselves in His presence, we will be justified. And through our lives will shine His love so that everyone can come to know who He is. Mm -hmm.